What's up YouTube, Jeff back again from DopeTechDaily.com and today I'm bringing you guys a $99 phone with a ton of really great features. So when you think about a $99 phone, you don't think about getting that much in the package. Today I'm going to be reviewing the ZTE Blade Spark, which ZTE did send me out for review and sponsored this video. I highly appreciate them doing that for me. We will be giving one of these away, so ZT is actually going to ship one out to the winner. Stay tuned to the very end of the video for the details. So I have been using this for about three or four days. I want to go ahead and show you guys what's inside the box. You probably remember that I reviewed the ZT Blade X Max like a couple months ago. One of the complaints I heard about that phone was that it's a little too big for some people. So this one's going to remedy some of those issues because this one's a smaller phone, but it's got some of the same features. So you see you get some of your information. It's an AT&T. Uh, prepaid right there. There's some auto pay information inside the box. You do get your power brick right here, ZTE power brick. And one of the best features of this phone, just like the ZTE Blade X Max, is you get USB type C in a $99 phone. Now that's pretty crazy. Most of the flagships and of course even the mid range phones are moving to USB type C, but you don't necessarily see that in these lower tier phones. And you get a SIM tool which is nice and add that one to the collection. All right, so let's go ahead and put the box to the side and talk about the main attraction. So like I said, this phone is similar in a lot of ways to the Blade X Max that I reviewed earlier this year. So if you were interested in that phone um, and you wanted to get one, but you thought it was a little too big, it was six inches on the screen size. This is a 5.5 inch phone, so it's gonna be more manageable. This one's easily one-handed for me. I can go one-handed, no problem at all. Let me point out some of the really good features here that you've got. On the back here, you've got a soft touch back, so this is not gonna get scratched up. That was one of my complaints with the ZT Blade X Max. It had a glossy blue back, which looked really nice, but it did get scratched up a little bit in my use. This one, no problems. You're not gonna see any scratches from this if you sit it down on your dash, you sit it down on your table at work. You've got a fingerprint scanner on the back, which is another really amazing feature for a $99 phone. You have to put that in perspective. Also, this scanner is super quick and it's super accurate. I have actually no problems getting the scanner to recognize my finger at all. Uh, as I said, you've got USB Type-C on the bottom. Of course, the build, it's a plastic phone overall. That's you know not unexpected for a phone with a $99 price point, but it is solidly built. And again, I do like the back on it. You've got the power button over here. It's got a nice texture to it. Uh, the volume rocker right there as well. You've got your SIM card slot over here. Also, you've got a micro SD slot there so you can expand your storage up to 128 gigabytes, I do believe. Headphone jack right there on the top. Now, a couple of things that you might have to be concerned about, and let me talk about each of them in turn. The first one, whenever I talk about a budget phone, people always ask about the performance. Now, this phone does have the Snapdragon 425 and two gigs of RAM. For running social media apps and every day-to-day, -day, you know, sort of app like Gmail, you know, text messaging, the phone is fine. Um, if you try to run games, and I tried to play quite a few games, I tried to play one more line, one more bounce, uh, one more brick. I even installed Injustice 2. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, some of the smaller games, like one more line, run okay, but don't expect to play anything like Injustice 2 or even the Final Fantasy game, which is installed on the phone out of the box. Um, doesn't necessarily run all that great, but that's not unexpected with the Snapdragon 425. You're going to see some drop frames. So if you're a casual gamer, that's fine. Um, one other reason that you won't be doing any heavy gaming on this phone uh, is that the internal storage is actually very limited. So I'll show you guys really quick. I stalled, installed my apps, and right now I'm using 14.03 of 16 gigs. So I've only got two gigabytes of storage remaining on the phone right now. Uh, and if I show you a screenshot here, a little less than five gigabytes available out of the box. So you're not gonna be installing any large number of apps on the ZTE Blade Spark. So that's another reason that you're not necessarily gonna be doing a lot of heavy gaming. But again, for casual use, it's not that bad. The two gigs of RAM, uh, obviously if you're gonna do a bunch of multitasking, that could be a problem. But for just running a few social media apps, your Gmail, your text messaging, I haven't had any problems whatsoever. Uh, the next thing is the battery, 3140 milliamp hours. I haven't had too bad a battery life. I ran it for three days. I got about an average of four hours battery life, which is pretty, pretty good for this phone. Again, I wasn't doing a lot of heavy gaming most of the time just because the phone can't handle that, but uh, I get comparable battery life to what I get on some of the mid-tier 
flagship style phones. Uh, the camera, which is always another question about any phone, you get 13 megapixel, it's got phase detection autofocus. You can get some good shots if you have a steady hand and you have decent lighting. Um, you're definitely gonna get, you know, not the greatest shots. You know, can't compare it to a flagship camera. But if you're looking to take pictures of your kids or something like that, and you know, you don't wanna buy a super expensive phone, this will get the job done in good lighting. I tested it in some low light situations and you do get a bit of noise, a lot, you know, a bit more than you would expect from a flagship. Uh, five megapixel camera on the front, good enough for taking selfies. I'm not a huge selfie fan, so that particular feature is not usually of the highest importance level to me. Uh, again, I think the main selling points here are that you get a lot of really good stuff, USB type C, fingerprint sensor, and then perhaps the biggest feature that you get for a $99 phone is you've got Android 7.1.1 running on here. So you've got one of the later versions of Android and you've got the August security patch. I got an update as soon as I got the phone. So you've got the most recent security patch on this phone and that's very impressive for $99. Overall, the software, ZT has really done a good job of toning down the software so that now it's a very usable, very usable phone. So overall, I think if you want a phone for 99 bucks for your kids, for a backup, or if you're just the kind of person who doesn't care about having a flagship, this is definitely a good phone to go with. The downsides are you're definitely gonna need a micro SD card for your photos and your media. Uh, because you're going to fill up the apps. You can go through and install some of this, uninstall some of the bloatware that's installed here out of the box. Highly recommend that if you don't use it. Uh, I left it there so I could show you guys exactly how many gigabytes are taken up. All right, so we are going to give away one of these ZT Blade Sparks. Uh, if you want to win this, all you need to do is uh, drop a comment below and then leave your Twitter name and then go over and follow Dope Tech Deals, which is my deals account on Twitter. I'll drop the link below with those instructions as well. You guys can find me at dopetechdaily.com, Google+, Instagram, and Twitter at the links in the description. Really appreciate you guys checking out the video. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy it so I can make future videos like this. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.